everyone. Um, good afternoon. So um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to talk about um, as uh, Martin said to me, um, I, I have to talk about Christian Muslim relation in Indonesia and I, and I uh, <clears throat> wrote a specific uh, subtitle sect sectarian tension and peaceful coexistence. So um, <clears throat> I will talk about, well, not only about Christian Muslim tension and peaceful coexistence, but also I'm going to talk a little bit about Christian Christian tension and or Christian Christian um, relation or Muslim Muslim uh, relation for about 30 or 40 minutes. And then Pafari maybe would like to uh, Keep respond to my to my talk. Um, <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. To begin with, um, I think I cannot move that. Okay, to begin with my talk, I'm uh, to those um, who are not familiar with um, Indonesian um, demographies, I'm going to share a little bit about um, Indonesian demography and along with. Um, um, religious believers. Um, <clears throat> the population for Indonesian now is about um, um, 272 million, which is um, quite uh, huge actually. This is the population in June 2021. And <clears throat> of this population, which is about 633 um, ethnic or tribal groups. So if we look at uh, the demographic um, 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 and uh, a demographic map of, of, of Indonesian society is quite um, diverse and quite uh, plural. So of this um, population, which is about 86%, um, which is Muslim, Islam, which is overwhelmingly a Sunni from various madhab. Madhab mean um, Islamic school of thought or, or schools of uh, Islamic jurisprudence. And then from Islamic streams, from multiple Islamic streams also, this is include Shia or Shi'i community in Ahmadis yeah, or Ahmadiyya. And then about 7% plus with Christianity, which is Protestant or Protestantism, which is about um, 20 million. Um, and then 3% plus Catholicism. Um, <clears throat> Indonesia differentiate between Christianity, Protestantism, and Catholicism. It's quite interesting when they mention Christianity mean actually Protestantism, which is which is which is different from Roman Catholicism. So we mentioned here Roman Catholicism means, um, and then about one percent um, plus Hinduism and Buddhism and Confucianism. So all of these six is we we, we call it um, state recognized uh, religions. So even though uh, we have um, six um, recognized religions, that recognized religion, we also have so many uh, local and other religious um, religious belief in Indonesia. So we we have, for example, we have many local belief, which is we call aliran kepercayaan, which is I think is more than three hundred um, organizations of local belief in in national level maybe more in regional level with um, about 20 million um, followers. <clears throat> and then it, we also have Sikh community, we have Baha'i, we have Falun Gong and, and so on and so forth. And then also we have significant numbers of non-believers and Jewish community also access in some places. Pak Ferry maybe know in, in Manado, there is a synagogue in Manado, yeah, Pak Ferry. So I, um, I met with Rabbi, um, um, in 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 Manado, some some Jewish exist in Manado, in Surabaya, in Jakarta, and others. So, giving this is this um, very diverse um, ethno um, religious group in Indonesia. But <clears throat> interestingly, if you look at if you look at um, the map of religions and, et and ethnic groups in Indonesia. So even though uh, Indonesia has, has many ethnic and tribal groups, look at about six more than 600 um, ethnic or tribal groups <clears throat> based on um, <clears throat> uh, the research about, um, about ethnic 
polarization index and about ethnic fractionalization index and it's very low it's very low which is which is low if, if we have very low ethnic polarization index or fractionalization index that means that we have very low um, ethnic based communal or horizontal classes or ethnic based communal horizontal conflict so um, for example indonesia of course we have some ethnic based conflict like maduris versus jaya or malay for example in kalimantan um, we have anti-Chinese campaign, for example, in, in Jakarta in the past, in Solo, in many others. But this conflict, uh, uh, ethnic-based conflict, is very, very low, very, very small, um, despite the fact that Indonesia has quite um, a great number of ethnic group or tribal groups, which is interesting to, to compare with um, religious conflict, which is very much different. So the facts of this is very much contrast with cases of religious based conflict or intolerance, which is I'm going to talk in a minute um, in the next um, slide. So uh, for example, um, violation of religious freedom, for example, <clears throat> in, in 2020 alone, and there were about um, um, 122 violation of religious freedom. Violation of religious freedom in this case include um, discriminatory and intolerant acts, or anti-pluralist movement, for example, and this took place in 29 provinces, almost in all provinces. Indonesia has 30, I think, 34 provinces now, and this is of, um, in in 2020 alone. The majority of 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 the religious um, uh, violation took place in West Java, for example, in West Java in Aceh in Jakarta, in, in Central Java, North Sumatra, and, and in other Muslim dominated provinces. <clears throat> so this is this is the case if, if we compare with um, um, ethnic based violence or ethnic based um, conflict and religious based conflict, for example. And this is interesting also to find the facts that um, of, of 122 cases, is um, about 238 cases of this conflict, of this tension, were committed by state actors. Which is state actors mean here it could be regional governments, it could be police, you know, it could be Satpol PP. Satpol PP is like, um, I think it's kind of a, a public order enforcer yeah, on, on, on municipal police units under the control of local governments, it could be in the province in regency, so it could be in municipality. And the courts, for example, and village chief, and, and so forth. And about 184, um, the, the conflict of tension is committed by non-state actors. Non-state actors in this case include <clears throat> Islamic or religious organization, um, <clears throat> Muslim social group, and, and so forth. So this data in again in 2020 alone, if we if we use this data after um, the new order, so that been um, a thousand case studies can be compiled here. I I I I I search here only in 2020 uh, alone. So um, <clears throat> let's move to the um, um, Christian Muslim fraud relations. What we discussed this morning. Um, this afternoon, I mean, <clears throat> Indonesia's history of Christian-Muslim relations have always been marked by tension and cooperation, peace and fire. And I think this is not unique in Indonesia. I think it many, in many countries, I think it is also the same, that the history of Christian-Muslim relations is not always marked by tension, cooperation, peace and fire, and that always happened in many places. On one hand, for example, Muslim and Christian, but Protestant Catholic involved in violent and conflict, but in other cases they engage in peace and tolerance, for example, and and multiple factors contributed to this Christian Muslim conflict and peace, yeah, ranging from political economy and religious issues. I'm going to explain next what the conflict of tensions between Christian and Muslims in Indonesia. <clears throat> has also been marked by Christian Christian classes. This is what I mentioned earlier, 
that um, Indonesia is not only marked by Muslim Christian, but also Christian Christian classes and conflict, and also Muslim Muslim conflict and peace. And in many cases, uh, Muslim Muslim tensions are actually more ruthless than Christian Muslim tensions. We can we can see I I can provide uh, numerous data and facts in in many places that actually Muslim Muslim tension is more ruthless than. Um, Christian Muslims, um, as in the case of Christian Christian conflict, although not as open as Muslim Muslim tensions, we can discuss later um, about this um, conflict. And then <clears throat> now, about the history of uh, Christianity and Christian Christian tension. Before I move to more detail about Christian Muslim tensions, I think to those who are not familiar with um, Indonesian history, so it's quite interesting to um, to see the, the the history of both Christianity and Islam in Indonesia. So um, <clears throat> the key story of Indonesia's early Christianity, which is, um, this is in the past, many people think about um, Catholicism or Calvinism, Lutheran, but actually I found uh, some sources, Nestorian, Assyrian Christianity, actually the oldest one, maybe Pak Ferry can, can um, clarify this information, which is quite interesting for me because when we talk about history of Christianity in Indonesia, mostly people talk about Roman Catholicism, which is in 16th century, I think, which is brought by Portuguese um, in Aceh and then in Maluku. And then, of course, Calvinist or Lutheran Protestantism, which is brought by, by Dutch and German, I think, in Sumatra. But also, one source is mentioned about Nestorian Assyrian Christianity, or we call it Christians. Of the is which is which, this is the oldest one which is about in seven or eighth century in north sumatra in pantor or barros regions i i don't know exactly uh, five, for this um this the book of um the book um, by jen aritona and and the late Karel Stenbring, which is a very well-known book about the history of Christianity in Indonesia. This book also mentioned about historian um, Assyrian um, Christianity in North Sumatra. And <clears throat> this is the past. And now, um, uh, the, uh, Christianity is more complex in Indonesia, which, of course, we have European Christianity, which is um, Protestantism, Roman Catholicism, we now have Indonesia have American type of influence, charismatic and Pentecostal Christianity. Well, uh, very again, maybe we can explore about um, Pentecostalism, which is very uh, quite booming in Indonesia now. And also we have Middle Eastern Christianity, which is which is quite, um, I don't know, is there any connection with Nestorian Nasirian Christianity, but Middle Eastern Christianity looks like some like Coptic or Syrian Orthodox Church. And I think one of the centers in Malang, where Pak Ferry now resided, I think, Pak Bambang, Dorsena, and others. Mostly they they graduated from uh, from Egyptian seminary, and they studied there, and they developed the uh, they, they developed Middle Eastern Christianity in Indonesia. So this is one of example of the plurality of Christian groupings in in Indonesia. And in the past, the Dutch expelled. Um, Catholics um, in the past, it's just like uh, what happened um, in other places. The Dutch expelled Catholic to specific islands or region in the um, archipelago. So, for example, in, in Maluku, the Dutch expelled Catholic to Tenggara, to um, Aru, to other places in, 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 in Southeast uh, Maluku. Uh, I think this is because 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 influenced by Catholic um, Protestant conflict in Europe, I think, and this will um, in, influence Dutch policies in Indonesia. And Dutch also divided churches in the local regional model of Protestantism. So we have Japanese Christian Church, Pasundan Church, Toraja Church, Patak Church, and and many others. I think the main reason for divided. Uh, for dividing this um, uh, Protestant church into ethnic or tribal churches in order to be easier to be controlled by the Dutch, I think. It's, maybe I'm wrong, but I think this is my, <laughs> my impression why the Protestant Dutch, they, they divided Protestant 
by, by that divided Protestant touch into ethnic or tribal um, Protestantism. And, and what about root of, of Christian Christian tension before we move to Christian Muslim tension? So root of um, Christian Christian tensions in the past is very um, complex. For example, the, what, what I mean by in the past is during the colonial and also during the new, um, the old order um, government. So in the past, for example, um, the conflict Christian Christian tension during the Spanish, for example, or during the Portuguese, for example, um, <clears throat> they have different responses to colonialism. And they also have different responses to Christianity, for example, about Christian teaching, about theology, about Christian theology, Christian practices, and so forth. And different responses to Indonesian nationalism. Some groups might, um, they support Indonesian nationalism, while others, uh, they do not, they didn't support um, Indonesian nationalism. They prefer to, to back up the Dutch, for example, or, or Japanese, for example, and so on and so forth. And also tension also because of different political affiliation, which is especially this is during, um, during the old order um, governments. And now as it's more complicated, the conflict, Christian, Christian conflict now is more complicated because of many issues. For example, they compete of seeking new conflict um, during my field work in Ambon in Maluku, for example, the mainstream Christian, mainstream Protestant, well-established Protestants in, in Maluku, for example, had been um, a, a new challenge of the new um, charismatic Christian group or Pentecostal group. They, they compete uh, to seek uh, to find new convert. And this also uh, become one of main sources of the conflict between Christian Christian in some areas. And also contestation of our issues of adat. Adat mean local custom or customary law and <clears throat> versus um, Christian doctrine. So many Christian they support um, um, Christian um, um, doctrine, but many others they support local customs. But some Christian they consider local custom is not Christian or not a uh, Christian, not Christian. So they, they they, they tend to um, um, avoid um, local from from other um, other Christian group, which is more uh, um, more um, tolerant with um, with other customs um, because of claims of authentic and originality of Christianity, for example. This is also um, happening. Some more claim to be more authentic uh, um, compared to... Yes, um, um, Christian, Christian conflict or tensions now has become more... Um, is more... Um, more complex because the root causes of, of, of tension is also very much um, complex. Um, I, I mentioned before competition of seeking new comfort, contestation of our issues of adat or customary laws versus Christian doctrines, claims of authenticity and originality of Christianity, um, contests over some critical social issues, for example, about corruption, about LGBT, which is very common issues in many places. Um, it's also become a major tension between Christian Christian groups and issues about church ownership, for example, it's also very important in some place. Multiple forms of ritual practices or different political support and affiliation, all of these things is a very important now it's become very important causes of a Christian Christian tensions in in Indonesia, and and then now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, um, Islam before I move to the Christian Muslim. So Islam is just like Christianity. Islam is also very complex. The history of Islam is also very very complex. Some people. Um, um, uh, mentioned about the roles, influence of Arab Muslims, some mentioned about Indian Muslim, 
Some mentioned about Persian and some about Chinese. For example, one of my book was about the role of Chinese in the spread of Islam in Indonesia, which is, which is, uh, which is a book to, um, to discuss about the contribution of Chinese Muslim in Indonesian Islam uh, before the Dutch um, um, colonialisms. So, and then we have an Islam just like Christianity, the same multiple form of, we have multiple form of Islam also. We have um, Sharia minded Muslim, we have Adat defender Muslims, we have various types of Sufism, nominal Muslim, Islamism, Salafism, all of these things. Um, um, and and it, we, can, we can find these groups in Indonesia. And then we have also multiple, multiple type of Islamic Muslim social grouping and so forth. And just like um, Christian Christian conflict, uh, Muslim Muslim conflict also is very very diverse and very um, complex. For example, contest of colonialism in the past, which is um, which is also very significant. Some Muslims um, support colonialism, while others um, contrast colonialism. So it's colonialism is also very important uh, root causes of conflict. And Adat versus Sharia Islam or Sufis versus Sharia oriented Islam, which is very common in many places. And then conflict between Kaum Putihan, we call it um, Santri versus nominal Muslims or Abangan, we call it in Indonesia sometimes. And then contest over state ideologies, state formation, constitution, laws, and many others. Political affiliation or different political parties. And now the conflict between Arab Islam I mean, the Muslims who supported Arab and those Arab, Arab, Arab Islam and Muslim who supported Indonesian Islam, what they call Andusantara Islam. And then conflict over the um, status of the, uh, the current Republic of Indonesian State, which is versus uh, Muslim who support Islamic State, uh, Khilafah and so on and so forth. And different expression of Islamic practices, belief, and many others, many, many others. So, uh, just like um, Christian Christian conflict, a Muslim Muslim conflict is also very, uh, very diverse and very complex. And and how about Christian Muslim tensions now and violence? So, um, Christian Muslim conflict um, is very long history. Just like Christian Christian conflict or Muslim Muslim conflict, which is also very long. Christian, Christian, Christian Muslim conflict is also very, very long, which is since European colonialism, of course, is because, because it was European colonialism, it was either Portuguese or Dutch that introduced, first introduced Christianity to Indonesia. So Christian Muslim conflict in the past began um, 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 because of the presence of uh, European um, colonialism. And in the past, Indonesia also witnessed Catholic Muslim conflict in the colonial past, for example, between Islamic Sultanates in some places in Maluku, in the Moluccas, for example, between Sultanates of Ternate, Tijuri, Bacan, Jailolo, and so forth, um, versus Portuguese, which is very uh, brutal in, in the Moluccas at the time. And then Protestant Muslim conflict during about a uh, um, 350 years of Dutch colonialism. And in many cases, um, Muslims, they accuse the Protestants or Christian in general as the Dutch alliances or Dutch Tujis, which is despite the fact, which is interesting despite the fact that actually many Muslims had been Dutch supporters also and various Christian group had been opposed to Dutch actually, like um, for example, um, Japanese Christian Church, for example, Kiai Tunggul Wulung and others and, and a group Christian leaders in Java, they oppose um, um, uh, Dutch actually. It's not all Christian um, um, supported Dutch colonialism, just like uh, Muslims, not all of them against the um, colonialism. Many of them actually become Dutch um, supporters. But um, in, in Indonesians, in, in Indonesian Muslim in general, they consider um, Christians as pro to European colonialism and Muslims pro to the um, Indonesian nationalisms. So, and then in the post-colonial new order, uh, Muslim Christian tensions, um, it, it, mostly because of, because of the government's policy of transmigration, which is moving from 
Java as Muslim dominated areas to Christian populated region in outer Java, for example, in Sumatra, in Kalimantan, Maluku, until the eastern part like um, um, Papua, for example. This transmigration policy, which has been studied by many scholars also, um, um, one of the uh, drivers of a tension between Christians and Muslims in the new um, orders. And then um, Christian Muslim tension and phylum in, in the post new order, we have we witnessed many things. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with Indonesian um, 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 political conflict or religious conflict, you can see the many Christians, uh, Muslim tension and phylum. For example, the massive, massive criminal violent conflict between Muslim and Christian factions in the post new order. We can find, for example, in Ambon, in Poso, in Halmahera, in Tobelu, in Aru, in many places. I wrote these books um, in the past and some articles about these conflicts between Christian and Muslim in various places. And, and also in, in, in most recent Christian Muslim conflict, we have, we have many cases. For example, about persecution against Christian leader and communities in Yogyakarta and other places prohibition of church related religious services and social activities this is also happened in some places and church destructions also happen in some places and bombings also in some in some cases by islamist terrorists of vigilante groups tensions over difficulty of building church for example and heated tension and violence against christianity before and after jakarta's um, 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 gubernatorial elections in 2017. Maybe you, um, you are familiar with um, with the gubernatorial um, election in Jakarta, which is the most um, violent, brutal um, gubernatorial elections, I think, the history of, of Indonesia. This happened because the running, because Muslim Christians, they, they, they contest one another to win the um, gubernatorial seat. So there was a very, very brutal fire in Jakarta, but only, or not only in Jakarta, but also in North Sumatra. So this is the most recent tensions between Christians and, and Muslims. And what exactly the, the, the root of Christian Muslim tension? We highlight, I highlight several things here. This might be, we can add in discussion. For example, the first I mentioned about uh, the rise of high of of various militant Islamist organization, vigilante grouping and fanatic religious leader. This is very, um, very critical about this group. I did research in the past in, in Solo alone in, in central Java. It's more than 100, um, 100 Islamist, uh, vigilante Islamist grouping in Solo alone. And, and, and imagine in other places in greater Jakarta and many others, so we have many um, cases of uh, um, Islamist organization and vigilante grouping. And second reason is because of the absence of law enforcement. Because this is a very important reason. And the third I mentioned is on the support of state actors, security apparatus, and then political leaders. Political leaders, it could be religious, it could be secular. It's not necessarily religious. Many political, secular political leaders, they support Islamist groups also because of a pragmatic opportunistic um, reasons. Uh, many of them, they support um, is, um, um, Islamic groupings also for, uh, for pragmatic reasons, which is um, political leader here include head of provinces, municipalities, regencies, and then so forth both in national and regional local levels, okay? And then uh, another factor which is very important is the role of religious power brokers. This is also very important um, reason for Christian Muslim tension, which is specifically here, like organization like Indonesian Ulama Council, Muslim clerics, and it's all of them, some Muslim clerics, all of them become, become of one of the major um, root causes of Christian Muslim tensions. And then another factor is black alliances. Black alliances mean, it's not African <laughs> alliances with Indonesian, but black alliances mean dirty alliances um, between political business and religious leaders for their political business and ideological agenda. This is true in, 
in Jakarta and other places, there is alliances between um, a political business and religious leaders for their own interests and purposes. And then <clears throat> controversies of a Christian candidate running for election of regional head, I mentioned earlier, either governors, mayor, regents in some places, Jakarta, not Sumatra, and some others is also sometimes become root causes of Christian Muslim tensions. And then about issues of regional Islamic laws, which is we call it Perda Sariat in Indonesia, and also um, Islamic local Islamic um, regulation, which is I have noticed in 2000 until 2013, which is about 730 um, 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 regional Islamic laws and regulations. Which is all of this thing is basically in in some places is very um, discriminate um, as, um, against um, um, Christians in in many cases, and, and then proselytization, um, uh, proselytization, which is which is also very important um, in this case. For example, the rivalry between Christian evangelical church and Islamist evangelical groupings to winning the heart of urban migrant workers. It is also important in greater Jakarta and other places, they compete um, evangelical Christians and evangelical Muslims, but by course they compete over new, um, to, to find or to get a new convert. It's also um, become important choices. That is about Christian Muslim tensions. And now we, this is about bad news. I, I, now, uh, good news is about Christian Muslim peace. That, that is something move, move, not not only talk about bad news, but talk about uh, something about nice things about um, about good news. What happened now? Um, which is, of course, the story of a Christian Muslim is is not the whole story of Indonesia. Of course, imagine Indonesia has um, more than three hundred regencies, um, um, have, have more than. Um, um, about three, um, I think about 34 uh, provinces and others are very, very complex and diverse. So the story of Indonesia is not story about, not only story about Christian Muslim intolerance or violence or conflict or tensions, but also about story of peace, about story of, of tolerance, the story of harmony and so forth. If you look at, look at the um, index, this is the most, um, the most intolerant index, and I compare with the most tolerant index, we can see the cities, which is which is um, top 10 cities, the top 10 most intolerant cities is mostly dominated by Islamist groupings. I would say um, in this, but the Aceh, but the Aceh is the only, is the only uh, offense which is ruled by Islamic law in Indonesia. Tanjung Balai, Banda Aceh, Jakarta, Cilegon, there's most of most of these places is um, very much uh, dominated by by some Islamist grouping. So if um, in in this in this area, which is contrast or different from 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 other under um, other cities, which is which is not uh, very much dominated by Islamist grouping, so mostly they they very much um, tolerant one another. Um, 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 Christian Muslim, they live in peace one another. For example, Salatiga, uh, Singkawang city. Singkawang is very interesting. In the past, when, in, in, in Jakarta, uh, many Muslims, <clears throat> again, uh, this is the ten, top 10 most cities, which is which is very interesting. It's Tomohon, which is Pak Ferry, um, came from Tomohon city, Kupang, and other places. So if you look at this, uh, not all Indonesian story is about conflict or violence. There are many, many cases of, 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 of tolerance, of harmony between Christians and Muslims. Uh, so um, this is the, in the um, in story used to measure um, um, most tolerant cities and most intolerant cities, which is I'm, I'm not going to talk, uh, which is very, uh, I'm going to move to the next slide to make it short, my, my talk. And, and also um, the cases of Christian Muslim cooperation for peace and harmony, we can, we can see in many places. So for example, um, the example of Christian Muslim coalition in elections of, uh, of, 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 of regional, provincial, 
uh, municipal district head, for example, in Maluku, in Ambon. So Jakarta case or not Sumatra case, which I mentioned earlier, is not only the case. In many cases in Indonesia, the, the Christians, Muslim, the coalition for, for general elections also. And we can see in Ambon, in Maluku, and for example, if, if governor is Muslim, the governor Muslim and vice governor Christians, if, if the governor is um, if governor Christian, vice governor Muslim, and so on and so forth. This also happened in, in many places in Indonesia, which is not only um, the case of Jakarta, it's not, it's, it's, it, it didn't happen in, in, many, in many places in Indonesia. And also I witnessed about um, Christian Muslim alliances for peace and reconciliation in conflict regions areas like Ambon and Poso in the past. Ambon and Poso was very intense between Christian Muslims conflict. But after the, after the violence conflict, many of them um, joined forces to establish peace, to establish peace and reconciliation. So which is um, also interesting um, case um, to, um, to study. And then um, <clears throat> a Christian Muslim collaboration in socio-cultural and religious activities. For example, there are many examples about this during the Christmas, during Eid al-Fitr, for example, and many others. There are many collaboration Christians between Christians and Muslims. And also working together to build worship places, for example, either mosque, either church, and, and on and on and on. There are many examples in many places in which Muslim and Christian group, they work together for peace, harmony, and, and tolerations. About um, three years ago, I posted um, some, um, I posted in my, in, in my first books about uh, cases, cases of Christian Muslims um, peaceful coexistence in rural and or urban areas across Indonesia. And, and, and I received more than 1,000 um, responses from um, from Facebookers, so it's, uh, they provide many many examples about Christian Muslims of uh, working together for peace and harmony in many places. Um, this is um, this is an example of a Christian Muslim alliances to build mosques and church. I visited um, um, these places in in Jepara, in in, in Kupang, other places. I, I witnessed this. I travel across um, Indonesia to see um, um, how Christian and Muslim handle um, differences and, and so forth. So they, they help each other building church or building mosques, uh, building church or building mosques. And so forth. It's, very, um, it's just a very small example of a Christian Muslim alliances um, for peace. So if we look at, so if we look at Indonesia, actually, which is very different from from one to another, those who are not familiar with Indonesian um, a map, for example. So if you look at um, Jakarta, it might be different. This is not Sumatra, it might be different, or Aceh might be different, but in other places, it's quite unique. So Christian Muslims um, 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 conflict, Christian Muslim tensions, or Christian Muslim um, relation is really, really diverse from, from from place to place, it's not the same from one another. So, for example, is there's there are many areas which is more tolerant, with others is not tolerant, and so on and so forth. Look at this; um, it's very very complex. It's not it's not it's not the same from one to another. And then this is a final uh, final thing that I'm going to share um, in this um, in this lectures. First, um, I would say uh, pluralisms um, the the ways to, to establish Christian Muslim harmony in the futures for Indonesian, especially. Um, for example, a pluralism, I, I, I would say pluralism is the best, the best form of intergroup relation. This is my opinion. Which if, if we compare with with other types of intergroup relations like assimilation or population transfer and so on and so forth. So pluralism, in my opinion, is the best form or the best format of intergroup relations. The second is we need to, um, to have law enforcement, of course, firm actions to militant and violent groupings, because in, in, in some cases, if, if lack of law enforcement, it's, it's really difficult to establish Christian Muslim um, peace or harmony. And then also we need um, um, regulation for interreligious harmony, for example, um, in, some, in, in, in many places we need um, 
um, regulation for interreligious harmony. And then active roles of regional heads, along with the security forces in promoting social harmony and Christian Muslim productive relation in the regions. This is also important in my opinion, because in many cases, a violence happened that because has been supported by regional head it, and, and also security forces in many cases, in many cases, in many cases, if if regional head, they do not support the the, the violence, they do not, if, if they support um, an intergroup um, um, peaceful um, um, relations, so it it it, it it, it seems like the society will will be uh, peaceful and tolerant and harmonious. It depends on um, regional head, and this is my opinion in one place to another. And then also we need active participation of the grassroots and civil society organization, which is becoming a noisy majority, quote by quote. And many many of them actually uh, took silence. Um, they they afraid of of again vigilante group in many others. And so and I think is if they become active, participate in, in promoting um, 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 peace and reconciliation, I think it's much better in the future. And then also um, the creation of Christian Muslim Muslim understanding, which through various academic and non-academic program, which is interesting to find the fact that many um, um, schools, many universities in Indonesia, they have Islamic studies, for example, they have Christian studies, for example, but they do not have Christian Muslim studies. So um, how to make these two um, together is not this, is, I think it will be good in the future. I, I see Islamic universities or Muslim universities, they, they, they have, they have um, um, Islamic studies, Christian universities, they have Christian studies, but a very rare, almost zero, either Islamic universities, Muslim universities, or Christian universities that have Christian Muslims relation studies. So I think if, if, if we promote this, I think we'll be much, much better in the futures. And then the last point is, is also we need to advance knowledge on Islam, Christianity, among Christian Muslim preachers, cleric, um, cleric religious leader, and so forth, because many of them actually, they have zero knowledge about the Christian have zero knowledge about Islam, Muslim have zero knowledge about Christianity and so forth. So um, the need to advance knowledge on Islam or Christianity among the uh, Muslim or Christian preachers, cleric, religious leaders, I think it's, it, it, it will be better in the future to create Christian Muslims and peace. And then also the role of education, which is also very important. I have noticed here, <clears throat> like school curricula, for example, school program, courses, teacher, teaching, learning process that involve Christian and Muslims. Um, it should be, it should be become the norms of all uh, education in Indonesia. Oh, wait. And then states, uh, religious peace and Christian Muslim harmony is also very important. And then <clears throat> the last part is, um, <clears throat> The last part is the dilemma between religious blasphemy and religious freedom. Martin, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, yeah. The sound yeah, can is you hear me? just about. Yes, carry on. Yes, okay. Yeah, carry on. Uh, okay. So um, um, the last point is it's really difficult for me as um, it's not only as an academic, but also as a practitioner. It's really very difficult to look at the case of Indonesia is, is, is bit the dilemma between religious blasphemy on one hand and religious freedom or tolerance on is really difficult. For example, uh, many Muslims they can be tolerant with Christians with Christian, but they really difficult to tolerant with uh, with among uh, Muslim groups like Shia, for example, Ahmadiyya, for example, Ahmadis and so forth or many local uh, Muslim um, sects and organizations, really difficult for them to make um, tolerant with them uh, because they consider to be, this Muslim group considered to be blasphemous or uh, considered to be not Islamic and so forth. It's, it, it, it's, it's much more, sometimes much more difficult to establish Muslim Muslim peace, harmony, rather than Christian Muslim peace or, or harmony.
because the issues of religious blasphemy, for example. And they can be tolerant with Christians, Catholic, but it's really um, um, difficult um, to, to be tolerant with, with, with other Muslims groupings. I have no idea, but Christians, I think, I think more or less the same thing. And it's, it's really um, um, difficult in some places because of, because of issues of religious blasphemy. And, and so this is the dilemma that I think is need to, to find some wise um, solutions um, in the futures. I think that's it, uh, Martin. I think um, we can we can talk more detail in discussion. If, Thank um, you. Um, questions and so forth, then I give uh, Ferry to continue give uh, respond to my talk. Thank you so much, everyone, and my apologies for um, for the connections. Um, I think is. I think we've got there. Thank you very much indeed for okay. that. Thank you so much. Sir. Yeah. Thank you very much for that very uh, thought provoking presentation and for persevering with the sound problems. And thank you to all of you listening for persevering through sound problems as well. I'm delighted that we've uh, managed to uh, hold things together.